Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have here a little set top box. I repaired this on yesterday's video. This is a mag box, but the similar advice I'm going to give in this video applies to Android boxes and other devices like this. What I mentioned was that some of these boxes have a 12 volt supply. They run on 12 volts. And some of them, this is a, a different model, but basically the same sort of thing, runs on 5 volts. And if you have a look, you'll see that the connector is a different size on these. So you can plug a 5 volt supply into here, but you can't plug a 12 volt supply in. It won't physically fit. This is a 12 volt supply, and it won't go in there. Okay, it will go in here. And the reason for that is so that you cannot easily, accidentally put too much voltage into here. If you put too much voltage in, for example, 12 volts instead of five, you will kill the box. Now, what it doesn't stop you doing is applying a five volt power supply to this box. Here is a five volt connector. You see it has a larger hole in the middle of it compared to this one. Okay, so that will fit into the five volt box, but it will also fit into the 12 volt box. Now, you may think that that is not a problem because if you put not enough voltage in, you're not going to really cause any problems. It seems obvious that if you put too much voltage in here, you will damage it. But it's also true that if you put too little voltage into here, you can also damage the box. So I'll explain why that is and also what goes wrong if you do apply too little voltage. It'll give you a chance to repair these if that's happened. The key to this little puzzle is that these boxes don't actually run on five volts or 12 volts. If you look at this one, you'll see that there are some inductor coils and each one of these is a power supply. It's called a buck converter. And these power supplies take the 12 volts coming in and drop it to lower voltages that the actual item needs to run on. So this does not run on 12 volts. You'll see here the voltages on this one are marked. So this coil is 1.5 volts DDR. That's for the RAM. This one is 3.3 volts, which is for the logic circuitry. This one is 0.95 volts, which is for the processor unit, this thing. Okay. There's another supply up here, one volt, which comes from this little voltage regulator. This is for the HDMI interface, basically. We have a five volt supply for some of the logic, and we have another 3.3 volts. One of the 3.3 volts is the standby. Okay and the other 3.3 volts is the main supply. So you need a standby voltage, so when you hit the button on the remote control, it will switch on. So that's what we have. As you can see, this does not run on 12 volts. The 12 volts actually powers the chips that are controlling these inductor coils. On this one, this chip actually controls one, two, three of them. This one controls this coil, yeah? And the other regulators are linear regulators. I'll show you the data sheet for one of these chips. We'll go for the one which drives a single coil, but this one really is just three of these built into one package. And then let's have a look at what happens if we put too little voltage in. Here is the data sheet. So you'll see we have V in. This is the 12 volt supply coming in. We have a coil driven from this output, SW switch, and that gives the voltage out. This is the 3.3, the 1.5 or whatever the chip is set to generate. Now, what the chip is set to generate is set by these two resistors. So these two resistors, the ratio between them will set the output voltage. You can see V out, the output, also comes back to here, feedback, okay? And these resistors divide the voltage down, 
and that voltage is then a reference. And by changing the value of the resistors, you can change the output voltage. So you can see this circuit is like a loop. It's generating an output and it's measuring the output, which comes back here as feedback. And it uses that signal to make sure that the output voltage is correct. Let me put it onto a piece of paper to make it a little bit simpler and then you'll see. So let me draw the circuit. I'll lay it out slightly different. If you refer back to the data sheet we're looking at, it is the same thing. Here is our chip. And coming into this, we have VN. This is the 12 volt supply. Okay. And coming out, we have SW, which goes to a coil, inductor coil. And on the output of the inductor coil, we have a capacitor to ground. And we have the load. So, for example, the supply that was 1.5 volts was for the RAM. Okay, and that goes to ground. So coming out of here, we have 1.5 volts. And then we have the feedback circuit. So there's a connection from the coil, which goes to two resistors, to ground. And then the junction of the resistors comes back here. This is feedback, okay? And I think you can see clearly now, the ratio of these two resistors will set the voltage here. So if this is 1.5 volts here, and the resistors are both equal value, for example, the voltage here would be half, 0.75. If we make this resistor lower, then the voltage would be lower than 0.75. And if we make this resistor higher, or this one lower, it would be higher than 0.75. So this chip will expect to see a certain voltage on here. And it compares that voltage with an internal reference. I just had a quick look to see what the reference voltage is on this chip type. It's around 0.75. I didn't see the exact figure, but let's use 0.75. So for this chip to work, when we have the correct output voltage, this resistor divider will be made such that the voltage on here is 0.75 volts. Okay, and that feedback comes in to the chip, and we have basically a comparator which compares that voltage with a reference. And the reference is the same voltage, 0.75. So when these two voltages are equal, it knows the output is correct, okay? This comparator then drives a pulse width modulator. Can hardly fit it in there, pulse width modulator. And that drives a MOSFET. Let's put the MOSFET in. That's our MOSFET, not particularly well drawn, but it's good enough. And the MOSFET connects to the VN. The VN also powers the chip as well, and the chip has a connection to ground. So that's how our chip basically works. Now, how do we get 1.5 volts out of 12 volts? The way this circuit actually works is that this pulse width modulator switches this MOSFET on at high frequency. So the MOSFET switches on, okay? The output switch now goes to 12 volts, and the 12 volts starts to flow current through the inductor. But an inductor will not pass the current directly. The current comes in, but it doesn't come out. Now, you're going to say, well, Rich, where is the current going then? Where the current is going 
is to magnetize the coil uh, magnetic field so the current is used to build up the magnetic field in the coil and as it magnetizes some of the current will now flow all the way through it and if we let it fully magnetize once it can no longer magnetize anymore all the current will flow through it but what we do is we switch the MOSFET back off again before this fully magnetizes off okay when we do that effectively while the current was still magnetizing the coil so there was practically nothing coming through here when we switch it off this magnetic field will collapse and in collapsing it turns magnetism back into electricity and that collapsing field is what generates the output voltage v out okay that voltage charges this capacitor the pulse width modulator will then switch the mosfet back on again and the same thing will happen it will send electricity into the coil current the current will be converted to a magnetic field it will charge up the magnetic field and then it will switch off again and the field will collapse and it will pump some currents into the capacitor and after a few times this capacitor will have 1.5 volts in it once this reaches 1.5 volts the feedback circuit now has 0.75 compared to the reference so the pulse width modulator knows it has enough voltage so the next time it switches the MOSFET on it will only switch it on for a very short period of time okay the frequency stays the same it's just the width of the pulse the frequency of this oscillator is around 600 kilohertz so it's doing this 600 thousand times a second okay because we're now sending smaller pulses in the load will be drawing current and the capacitor will start to discharge as the voltage drops below 1.5 it compares it with a reference and it says ah I don't have enough output voltage anymore so what's it do it sends a wider pulse into the coil so the MOSFET is on for longer, current flows for a bit longer, we get a bigger magnetic field, so when it collapses, turns back into electricity, we get a bit more voltage, and that's how this circuit works. Now I'll come to the problem. And the problem is the feedback. As you can see, this circuit will try to maintain the output voltage at 1.5 in this case so if the input voltage drops uh, let's say down to 5 volts because we plugged the wrong power supply in it will still try to maintain 1.5 volts here that's what it's designed to do and the only way to do it is to turn the MOSFET on for longer so instead of having a sequence of pulses like so a normal operation with a 12 volt supply it now has to go switch on stay on for much longer off back on stay on for much longer off back on stay on for much longer yeah it has to do that and that means it's putting more current into the coil if the voltage is less to get the same energy out the current has to be more yeah and that's what goes wrong with them this little chip is driving this coil as we've just described and it's trying to generate 3.3 volts this big chip is driving three coils and trying to generate 1.5 3.3 and 0.95 now this chip is quite small therefore the mosfet inside here is quite small this is quite a bigger chunkier thing you can see yourself we have more than one pin going to the coil we have big fat tracks this can handle quite a bit of current this can't 
Also, double whammy. This one is trying to generate the highest voltage, 3.3. So as the supply voltage drops down to 5, because we pulled the wrong power pack in, this has to work very, very hard to generate the 3.3. Because of the feedback circuit, it has no choice. It must generate 3.3. And the current increases to the point where this MOSFET blows. And that's why these devices are killed by plugging in a power supply with too low voltage. Usually you can fix it by replacing the chip. If you're really unlucky, then it went with the short circuit MOSFET in such a way that the five volts went straight into this supply and possibly damaged whatever was connected to the 3.3. But often, very often, that chip is the one that fails. So there you have it in a nutshell. Was it 10 minutes? I'll put it on the screen because I'm not sure it. I always get carried away. Yeah. That's how these things get blown up. Okay, hope you enjoyed that one and I will see you all on another Learning Electronics Repair video very soon. Ciao for now, guys.